Hey there folks, how's it going today? It's Friday, uh, August 4th, 2023, almost 7 o'clock p.m. We're going to do a relatively short stream today. Sorry there was no stream yesterday. Uh, this was, I fell asleep, I got tired, sorry about that. Um, but welcome to another Steve's Game Reviews live stream, another Tierra Sadie stream. The main event today is super exciting. It's called Early Games for Young Children for the TRS-80 Model 1-3 cassette. Look how happy that kid looks. By John Paulson. There's an old TV they look, they're playing the game on. And, uh, yeah, I picked this up in a lot, and uh, <laughs> I wanted to try it out. Basically, it just came with uh, the manual, and here's the cassette tape. Hey, Stars Manny, how's it going? Here's the cassette tape. Just says C-Load on it, copyright 1982. Hey, Palpa, <laughs> the advanced stuff, uh, yeah, basically. I think it just came in a plastic bag. I don't think there was a box of this. I'm not a thousand percent sure of that, but that's my impression. But yeah, Early Games offers the child a diverse selection of activities. I took Early Games home for my kids, and they really liked it. Early Games help children learn new, new concepts. You, know, you can be as happy as this child over here. So we'll do that momentarily. And first, we have with us the November 1981 issue of Sea Load Magazine. We'll play this for do this for a while. So I'm going to start with Sea Load Magazine first. Maybe I'll do half the tape, and then I'll do early games. Then we'll do the other half of the tape. I'll do it that way. Oh, man, you're busy. You're moving to a new town. Oh, that's cool. Hopefully, it's for a good reason. Welcome to the one viewer on Twitch as well. If you're a real viewer and not a bot, uh, let me get started here. Let me minimize this. I'm going to maximize that. All right. So let us start with the C loads. One second. Okay. C load. Hit play on the tape. Well, C load magazine. It's always a question which would be better the C load magazine, which cost $3 an issue or $3.50 maybe? Or the early or the, the commercial software, which usually costs a lot more. We'll see. Obviously, you know, this one we don't have too high expectations for because it's, uh, you know, for kids, but or really young kids. <laughs> but hopefully it'll be good. But I guess it's actually a cute picture on the cover here. It's like, uh, you know, the kid, it's like on the screen you can see it's like one plus two equals, and the kid's like holding everything. That's right, little Timmy. You got it right. Hey, Ninja. Good to see you. How's it going? All right, let's uh, start the game. Start this program, rather. C load. The Audible Magazine, issue 45, November 1981. It's from November 1981, Stars Manny. <laughs> uh, and it looks like this one is. Just a bouncing line, making a pattern. The cover, they always have some like cute animation or something, but sometimes it's better than others. I mean, this is this is you know, cool, but obviously, very very simple program. It's not uh, not going to win any uh, coding awards or anything like that. Oh, the early game set, nineteen eighty two. Uh, where'd it go? Here it is. Copyright nineteen eighty two. Do you see that? So this, they're pretty close, you know, pretty close in time period, actually. All right, is this going to ever stop? It's making, like, a nice like quilt or something. But now it just ruined it. All right, they went aboard it. And it eventually does say, like, you know, copyright, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But I don't know how long it's going to take to do it. I think we got the idea. So I'm going to stop it. And let us load the second program, which is called Lifespan. Lifespan. Life forms. You precious little life forms. So Ninja, how you doing? How's it going over there? Do do. So uh, yeah, I fell asleep yesterday, unfortunately. But I'm streaming now, and tomorrow I'll probably stream another Atari game. Oh, I got something super cool that I'm going to stream soon. I'll show you what I got. This is, I, never, I don't know where this came from. I came from eBay, but I don't know where it came from before that. Um, 
I think this is amazingly cool. It's a Epix 1984 preview disc. Okay, which by itself would be cool. But it it's like printed directly on the disc. So Silicon Warrior, Breakdance, Impossible Mission, Summer Games, Puzzle Panic, World's Greatest Baseball Game. And on the back are the instructions how to load it. Like directly printed on the disc. I think that is so freaking cool. When I saw that, I was like, I must get a copy of this. So hopefully I'll stream this maybe on Sunday or something. Maybe tomorrow, actually. We'll see. But, I mean, Epix is a real classic company. Yeah, i never seen that before either. I mean, it actually even has on it, like, it says Chroma Disc Patent Pending. So, like, it must have been some cool thing that someone came up with. And then maybe, it, you know, it didn't work out. I don't know. But I think it's super cool. In, uh, I think in, like, China, in, in like China or Asia, Japan, like, I think China, like, a lot of the bootleg stuff, they have really fancy discs, and some of them have stuff printed on them, but i never seen it in the U.S. News is tired, sick. I'm sorry to hear that. Lots of eventful things going on. Hopefully good eventful things. How's everything with me? Um, I'm okay. It's a little busy. A little stress as well. But, you know, mostly mostly work stuff that's just difficult sometimes, but it happens to everybody. I actually volunteered today uh, with Junior Achievement. That was cool. It was funny because um, <laughs> they were like, uh, I got there, and there's like three groups of people, or there are three volunteers, three, three leaders of the volunteers, and one of them is like, I we're going to be like, you know, cleaning and polishing something, I don't know. And the third person's like, the second person's like, we're going to be putting together, blah, blah, blah. And the third person's like, I need some help fixing old computers. I was like, old oh, computers? <laughs> That's me. Like, I'm there. Like, I'm, I'm <laughs> so actually, I had a pretty good time. It was pretty fun. I got to sit in front of a bunch of old computers and try to fix them. And, uh, you know, so sort of right up my alley. Was it didn't feel like work, but uh, sorry you're not feeling well. Yeah, I know it's preferred for me exactly. <laughs> I was wanted a volunteer like I have this YouTube channel. All right. Everything is relative to a young boy. Year seems like a long time. I should put my headphones in because some of these do have sound, and I won't be able to hear it otherwise. Which an old man a year is the moment in time. Life comes in many different shapes and sizes. We usually just think of things on our own scale. However, we're surrounded by life forms that look at things on a much different scale. This program may help you to see things as you've never seen them before. Let's look at the size of some life forms. This is a bacterium, singular bacteria. It is 0.0015 inches long. It weighs about 3.5 e to minus 18 ounces. Bacterium don't die of old age, they divide. It's hard to say what the average life is. Let's say about 20 minutes. This is nice pictures here. This is a honeybee. Its length is 0.6 inches. Height is 3.5 e minus 3 ounces. And lifespan is 35 days. Press any key to continue. This is a house cat. I'm not going to read all these. 1 foot tall, 40 pounds a year. This is a man. 5 foot 9 tall, average. Weight 165 pounds. Well, that's the average. I'm, I'm pretty messed up then. Lifespan is 70 years. Hopefully it got greater since 1981. This is a lowland gorilla. Weighs 300 pounds, less than 20 years. That's not so good. This is a grizzly bear. Weight is 800 pounds, and lifespan is 25 years. This is an Arabian horse. Weighs 1,000 pounds, lifespan is 22 years. This is an Asian elephant. Weighs 9,500 pounds, lifespan is 42 years. This is a blue whale. It weighs 100 tons, 100 feet long, lifespan is 40 years. The largest animal on Earth. This is a redwood tree. It's gone down since then? Ugh, that's terrible. It's 270 feet... I wonder why if that's the case. 270 feet tall, weighs 2145 tons, lifespan is 3,000 years. The biggest living thing. Alright, so... this I can use scales or a test... Let's do test. I don't know. A house cat is how many times as big as a grizzly bear? I don't know. Point. What does it mean big? Is it like volume or height or what? 
Do you think two? I was going to say three, but I'll say two since you said two. That's right. Good job. All right, I don't like this, though. Not, this, uh, this is not a uh, review program. But I want to do this again. Ugh, come on. Good job, though, Stars Bandy. You get a prize for that. Sk Let's do scales. Select one of these to give a sample size. Under selection, man. Size of man. Let's say six feet. Weight of man. What's the difference? 280 pounds. Average lifetime for me. I'm going to say 80. I think it went up. I wanted to have gone up. So, it'd be nice if they showed pictures and said, like, here's, here's like, what, if you this is the man, then the bacteria would be, like, you know, this little tiny dot or something, but I guess they can't do that. So that's pretty, eh, whatever. All right. Well, I like the pictures. Nice pictures. On test, <laughs> on this test, you one right of one. That's 0.958333%. That's a catastrophe. I believe you could do better. What? That sizes it up. I think your math's a little bit off there, TRS-80. That should be 100%, not 0.95%. What? That's really interesting. It must be some weird rounding error. Or bad bad programming by this guy. I like the little, little cute animations, though. Alright, let's load the next one, which is Planets Over Seattle. That sounds really exciting. Planets over Seattle. Who's always sending those emojis? I try to squint to see what the emojis are, and they stop doing it so I can't see them anymore. Like, I don't have my glasses on. I need to like be like... Eh. Anyway. So all you guys have uh, fun plans for the weekend, aside from Stars Manny, who's moving to a new town. Is there a song about that? I can't remember now what I'm thinking about. Oh, did I show you guys I got this, too? I think I did. I think I showed the last stream. I'll show it again. Um, I saw the Indiana Jones movie, and then coincidentally, I got this um, Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine Collector's Whip. <laughs> So, I, mean, I guess when I, when I play Indiana Jones, the Infernal Machine, I'll open this up and, like, whip people with it. Hey, always asleep. How's it going? What is that? Some kind of Chinese symbol or something, Pop Pop? It's, it's, it's an actual whip, supposedly. It's funny, on the back, there's, like, a, you know, it says whips. Like, you know, it was in some store. It was, I guess, in the whip section. I don't know what that means. <laughs> like, <laughs> But it's supposed to be a whip. I guess it's, like, a piece of tape on it or something that you take off and then... I never opened it. It's like, I'd open. I think when you... You know what? It should be like when you open it up, it goes like, do, 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 or something like that. That that would be like the correct, I think, functioning for it. But it is apparently whip. How was the movie? The movie was much better than I expected. It would have been, in my opinion, an excellent movie. But, it, I mean, first of all, it really can't be, like, Last Crusade. Last Crusade is, like, a phenomenal, phenomenal movie. So it's very, very hard for it to beat that. Even if it was the best it could possibly be, like, Last Crusade would probably be better. But I will say that it almost was really, really good. And it was good. But the only thing that stopped it from being really, really good was... He's 81, I believe. The only thing that stopped it from being really, really good was... There's not 106. Was that one of the characters in the movie, one of the main characters, is like such... In the beginning of the movie, is such a nasty, like, bitch, basically. Like, disgusting, disgusting person. Um, and... it's That person is so unsympathetic that you want them to die the whole time, and they don't. But they do eventually redeem themselves. So, like, it, like, saves the movie. Because if not, if they didn't redeem themselves, I'd probably have hated the movie. But they do redeem themselves. You know, unlike some of the characters in the Crystal Skull who were, like, completely unredeemable. But 
that the fact that that went on for so long made the movie like really intol not intolerable but unpleasant for a period of time. But there are a lot of good things about it. In the beginning, the first like twenty minutes is a whole sequence where he's de-aged, like about you know I don't know a bunch of years, and that was actually a very cool sequence. Planets over Seattle. This program competes in position all planets from Seattle, Washington, or your town at any given time. For January, say, either December 2008, Pirate Gear Boy, early games and early stream. Phoebe Waller Bridge. Is, that might be her the, the, the name of the person. I'm not sure of her name. She doesn't completely dominate the film, but she, yeah, she's she's a problem. But she's not as bad as some other characters that they've had before, like Mutt from the last movie or Mac from the last movie, or the British, not the, not the German lady from the last movie, <laughs> or um, I would probably include you know Short Round and um, the blonde from, from uh, Temple of Doom in that list. I mean, she was bad, but she had some... There was, she wasn't... She could have been worse, but like, yeah, you wanted, her to, you wanted her to die. There was also a kid, by the way, who... At one point, the kid gets kidnapped, and they're like, oh my god! And I was like, I'd be like, so long, see you, loser. Like, I don't care. Like, good, good luck. Have a good, have a nice death. But that kid, I will say, even though he was like a little bit of a Mary Sue, um, and he was a guy, um, he was way like more useful than some other kids in the other movies. So it was whatever. It, it was it was still good. You ever found her that annoying? Well, okay, well, she, I don't, I, she wasn't, she, no, she wasn't annoying, but she's more like just useless. Yeah, the kid flew an airplane by himself with no training, but he did, pra he was practicing flying an airplane before that, like, a, not in an airplane, like, he had, he built himself a trainer, so, like, it wasn't like he all of a sudden just walked in and learned to fly an airplane, like, there was somebody teaching him how to fly an airplane, even though he never flew it before, so it wasn't completely, like, out of the blue. All right, so you may slide in the routines listed below. Let's try uh, graphic display of sky. Uh, it only goes with 2000, so I don't know. Let's say 11, 2000. Seattle, civil time in hours, minutes, and seconds. I don't know, who cares? 12, oh, oh. I, I don't know, Dory, it might be true. Directors trying to get your pants. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't think it was like directed by Harvey Weinstein. The director was Steven Spielberg. So I, I don't. I mean, I I would be surprised. <laughs> All right, we're computing here. After this, the next thing on the tape is display, which is just it shows like a display of what's in memory. It's like a utility. So I think after that I'm going to uh, after this I'm going to try the early games, and then we'll come back to the sea load. Do 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 do. What happened? Do do do. Are you still computing? Do 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 do. What? By the way, at some point I soon hopefully I gotta play. Okay. I gotta play the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade adventure game because it's so good. All right, so this is it. This is all that we're doing here. We show this. We sh you computed for all day long to show this what the sky looked like in Seattle. <laughs> I guess Mar Me Mercury, Venus, Pluto, Mars, Uranus, Neptune. All right, that was wonderful. I'm glad we did that. Let's let's kill this and let us load up the early games. Early games, which will be super fun, I'm sure, because it's made for two year olds. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, I, I'm. Uh, thanks a lot, Pal Buck. <laughs> I'm glad that I saw the movie um, in the theater. It was, it was way better than Crystal Skull. It was worth seeing. And it ended okay. See, I, I, I believe that the ending really makes a big difference. So, like, example, Monkey Secret of Monkey Island, I think, is one of the best games ever made. Monkey Island 2, I think, is one of the worst games ever made. 
The reason why is because the story is a big part of an adventure game, and the story makes no sense at all, and the end just basically takes a dump on the player. The puzzles are not freaking wonderful either, by the way. The puzzles are fine, they're okay, but there's a lot of issues with the puzzles too, in my opinion. But the bottom line is, the the ending is so bad that for me it completely ruins the game. Now there are a lot of people though who will say Monkey Island 2 is one of the best games ever made, and they're like, well, yeah, the ending was not good, but you know, 95% of the game was good, so. It gets at least a 95, but it does not work like that for me. you got to finish strong. If, like, for example, like, you have a movie, like, let's say Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade, was a great movie for, you know, two hours, and then at the very end, you, you know, the father's shot, and he's trying to figure out what to do, and then all of a sudden he wakes up, and he's like, oh, it was all a dream. There was no Holy Grail, there was no Donovan, there was no anything. Oh, but Dad is, like, in the next room. Like, that would have been horseshit, because you can't, that's that's not how a story works. You can't just all of a sudden be like, oh, whoops, it's over. And that's what they did at Monkey Island 2, and that's why that game is bad, in my opinion. Definitely not a top anything game. It's, 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 it's not a good game. Sorry, Ron Gilbert, if you're watching this, but, like, I respect you very much as a game designer, but I don't think that was a good game. Um, and the opposite, it could also be true. So the sense that, like, this Indiana Jones movie, if this character had stayed that way the whole movie and been the way through the end, it would have been a, a bad movie, in my opinion. A very, probably a very bad movie. But the fact that sh they redeemed this character and, like, it sort of worked out and she had a good character arc and it worked well in the end, um, that... That saved the movie, basically, and it made it, a, it made it a good movie. It wasn't an excellent movie, but it was a good movie. I, I could see even a very good movie. But you have to, you have to, the second time I see it will be better than the first time, because I'll know that this crap with this, with this character is only temporary. I'll still probably hate her the whole first half of the movie, but the first, when you, when you first watch the movie, the first half, you're like, what, what kind of crap am I watching here? Stars Man is different than me. If the game was generally enjoyable, I don't care if the ending is weak or not, as long as I enjoy the game there. Okay, I hear that. But I, for me, it's it depends what type of game. If it's an action game, I probably would agree with you. Like, who cares? But if it's an adventure game, I get very invested in the story. Um. So Dorian says, I wonder what they're trying to do with... Oh, and so by the Pirate Game War, you should see the latest one. It's worth it, in my opinion. And, it's, and you don't have to... Crystal Skull is almost immaterial. In fact... I don't want to spoil, but, like, not really a spoiler. Like, the you know, um, she and the Booth's character in Crystal Skull, a lot of people didn't like, is not in the new movie. And basically they say that he died, you know. <laughs> so it's like, okay, good. Good riddance. <laughs> I mean, I'll, let me first uh, run this, and then we'll talk about the other stuff. So this is really weird. The way they decided to design this is they figured the kids are too stupid to select for a menu. So instead of that, we'll just show a bunch of things on the screen, and when the kids are interested, they can just press a button, and, and, and it'll select the thing that they want. So like here. Oh, that's a little loud. Hold on a second. Probably too loud, right? Let me lower the volume. Yeah, it, it depends. Some people feel differently about these things, I guess. Uh, Alright, can you match this number? Buh! Let's see, uh, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see five. Oh, that's not right. Uh, one? Uh, eight? Yay! Mommy, I did it! Can you match this number? Let's see, is it nine? I'm doing so good! <laughs> Two! That was such a big boy! Alright, let's exit this one. How do you exit? <laughs> I think it's return. There we go. Let's try the next one. I think this is similar to say show you blocks. 
How many blocks? Buh. I'm telling you, it's six. It's not even give me a hint. It's like, dumbass. It should be, after a bunch of times, she'd be like, no, it's two, but it doesn't. I think it says in the manual that, like, it gets harder after some period of time, but, like, I don't see how it could get harder. Hold on, what does it say here? This one doesn't say this. Um, some of them say they get harder. The alpha... Which one? Uh, I don't know. I thought one of them says it gets harder, but I don't remember anymore. But this came out for IBM PC also, although I think a couple years later. Right, let's see the next one. Math problems here. Uh. All right, so that's that's the addition. I wish it, I wish it would start from the beginning. I wish it would start from the next one. The kids are advanced to read how many blocks. Their part must be way too easy for them. Well, they're not, they're not reading anything. That's the thing. They're just there's no there's no words in this game. This I mean this feels like it's like it was really like I mean I don't know that I guess I guess some educator made this. I thought it was like really some hot shit. Oh, it says this becomes more difficult if it's play with success. Let's see if it becomes more difficult. Actually, the subtract of the cow the add of the cow is supposed to become more difficult too. I don't see it becoming more difficult, though. I mean, how many times do I gotta succeed? Like a million? Half the educational value should you kids use computers in the first place. I guess. Oh, there's a four. Wow. By the way, I asked your question now, Dorian. What are you trying to do Monkey Island 2's ending? It's maybe setting up to take the third game in a weird direction. I don't think so. I think basically they were just like, I think this will be funny if we just end the game this way. Ha 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 ha! This has been done before. Let's do it. Let's try it. But what if? Oh, who gives a shit? Like with the players, we're getting pissed off. Whatever. Just, it'll be funny. That's what I think happened. But I could be wrong. All right, this is just not going, not getting any harder. And it's getting stupider. So I'm gonna move on to the next one. Addition, subtraction. Those match letters. I already use the keys. Can you match this letter? I'd be like a pack of like, uh, we are smart. We find things to make us go. We can play early games for the TRS-80. We are smart. We're very smart. I'm pretending to have so much joy playing this. Alright, that's, that's it for that. Let's see what else there is. <sighs> Alphabet. Which letter is next? This, this, now it's actually giving me some hint here. Oh, it's that one. That's that's actually for <laughs> always be closing. <laughs> that's funny, pal. Fun. I'm not, I'm not taking my key presence fast enough. So this, I like this one the best. This one is actually like intelligent. Teach your kid the alphabet. <laughs> I'm about to do it again. Let's see the next one here. Beep, beep, beep. 
Names. Type name and press enter. Spell the name? I just typed the name. Oh, it says adult is supposed to enter the child's name. I see. I'm proud of the computer. Good job, little stew! Yes, little stew, that's a good job! Oh, it's me! That, that's my name! Stew! <laughs> my daughter's like hanging around here. What else is there? I think there's one more. Some pure shapes, it says. I don't see nothing. Oh, this is draw. I mean, there is no compare shapes in this version. Unless I, unless I missed it. How do you draw? Press any key. The upper keys draw up. The lower keys draw down. The quarter keys draw... I press U. That's not a, a lower key. There's no key repeat. This is not much of a... Of a uh, draw program. I bet you, I'm sure like on the other, it says press the space bar to change the color. No, the space bar doesn't change the color here. I guess some of the other platforms the space bar changed the color. My daughter probably thought I was freaking out of my mind is what she thought. But, I mean, that's what she thinks all the time. Look, Daddy! I'm making a picture! Look at this! Oh, -hoo. Yeah! I'm a complete moron. Look at that. What do you think that means? Take some drugs to change the color. That's funny. You can define an adult that didn't see that before. So is there no compare shapes on this one? Let's see. I <laughs> messed up playing. Uh, let's see. ABC. Oh, names. That. Oh, this. It's out of order, but... What the... What's this? This is... Oh, this is like... This is like... Okay, I know what this is. Three of these things belong together. Three... One of these things doesn't belong. Can you guess which one isn't belonging by the time I finish this song? do 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 <laughs> and he has it going. These are the games that make kids play outside. This is probably better than that the monkey in the jack of the box. Probably. This is like at least slightly. In That's weird. What's this thing at the top there? What the heck was that? What? What is that thing at the top? I think, some, I think it was a bug. Now, this game at least is slightly intelligent. I mean, like, this is, like, you know, maybe slightly more advanced. Not much, but... Alright, well, you get the idea. I think that's it. I, don't, I think we covered all of them. I'll check, though. I think that's it. Made in Minneapolis by John Paulson. Early games for young children... Again, yeah, look how happy this little tyke is. It can't be so bad if that kid is, like, so happy, right? It's all worth it. Yeah, that's it. So, that's early games for young children. Not even a hangman game. Yeah, I think this game sort of sucks, honestly. Like, it's okay. I remember, like, when I was when I, my kids were really little, I bought them, like, Elmo's World game. And a part of it was just hitting the keys or whatever. And then Elmo would be like, Hey, you touched Elmo! Ha ha ha! You know, like, whatever. Like, ew, Elmo! So, I mean, like, I guess if you play that crap, then, like, yeah, kids are idiots. They'll be happy with anything that makes noise and flashes. I think that's fair enough. So, uh... <laughs> anyway. For that Elmo's game world, I think, I, I think that's, like, the only game I ever threw in the garbage, <laughs> to be honest. The kid was 40 years old. Well, you think I'm, like, 100? Thanks, Stars Manny. Alright, that's enough for, for this. No, no, I wasn't selecting that. I'm gonna, let's, let's, let's reset this here. 
Let's play the other side of... Let's try spelling egg on the other side of the CeeLo tape. Yeah, I, I feel like I, I feel like I th actually literally threw those out. I think that's like the only th game I ever threw out was the I had like three Elbows World games. And it's like uh, I can't. Even, I mean, it, I could do his voice, but it's it's like it's a it's irritating to everybody else, and it's even irritating to me to do it. So it's probably not worth it. I'll just do like some more Cedric instead. Oh, Graham! Watch out for the edge, Graham! I wish Mission Makers of the TRS-8 and be streamed. <laughs> Hopefully all games will be streamed at some point. I just gotta, gotta work through them. It takes time, you know? Like, I spend so much time just trying to get things to work sometimes. Like, honestly, like, I, I've I spent probably already a couple of hours just trying to get this tape, one tape to work. This one. Galactic Empire. It's... It's, I have it for the TRS-80, but this is the Atari 8-bit version. And um, this is just, if you don't know if you've ever heard of this game, it's published by Adventure International, but this is the game that found, that started Broderbund. It was made by Doug Carlson, who founded Broderbund. He created this game originally on the TRS-80, then it got ported to other platforms, including the Apple, I think, was the one that, that Broderbund published originally. But... Uh, but yeah, so this is a, a cool, like a, it's a cool piece of history. But I can't get this damn tape to work. So hopefully, I, like, literally, I spent so much time on crap like that. You know, my, my why is my light not on? I, did I turn it on? All right now it's on. I'm all washed out, but uh, there it's like adjusting. So I, mean, I think I put the light here if I had to turn it on. There were the TRC source book back in the day with all the listings in it. Which, which, what are you talking about there? All the listings for what? One moment, please. It's like it's like like I walked into someone like middle of changing their clothes. They were taking their clo their 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 underwear off. It's like one moment, please. You're like, hang on. <laughs> That's what that feels like. One moment, please. I'm not sure what the TRC source book is. I like this. That was nice. Welcome to Spelling Egg with sound. Do you want instructions? Nice to hear a sound there. Spelling Egg is a spelling game which one to ten players try to spell selected words to a displayed list of possible choices. After a player has a chance to review these words, the screen is erased a series of blank schemes in terms of the desired word. The player doesn't spell the word by entering the letter, correct letters in any order desired. No correct entries are made. A score with 100 points will be ordered to play that round. 10 points lost reach for an entry. After far less of time, the egg is scrambled. No words or points are awarded to the player for that round. Okay. Um. Leprechaun song? Is that the song? It's like, a, it's like an Irish song, but it's not. I would call it the Leprechaun song. I'm not sure what it's called. By the way, you know, TRS-80, like, cannot input. There was no sound to the TRS-80, but people figured out Clever ways to do it anyway. Number of players, I guess, one. Name player number one, Stu. Oh my goodness. Too easy to 20 hard. <sighs> 10 will be a chore for me. Let's try it, though. Stu's turn. Oh, I get to think about this? I don't know. Uh... I got a sentence with all these words. Her. <laughs> uh, where's the TRC sound card? There's no TRC sound card. Oh, it's only two. Le so I have to pick the one that fits. It's a K-Man? I'm sure I played this game as a kid. 
I remember that. I remember that. I, 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 this is like major nostalgia all of a sudden. I definitely played this. That's it. Do you want to play again? Okay, I got another. Oh, so every turn it's different words. Okay. I'm not gonna. Let's. Let's. Just, what if I just play it as if? Do I, if I play it like it's a Hangman. <laughs> I think I saw Bay was on there. Oh no, I guess not. Maybe I remember what the word was. But it's not like Hangman where he grows like Hang or whatever. Oh, this guy's about to drop dead. I guess that's what you have to do is memorize all the words. That's why it's, it's harder the more words you have. Uh, anybody, any thoughts here? Cat. <laughs> Let's try T. Oh, Papa! Good job! This actually made me happy, because it's just this, a little bit of nostalgia. I, I don't, so many people play games for nostalgia, like, this is a game I forgot that I ever played. It's not a very great game, obviously, but I literally forgot that I ever played this game, and here it is, just all of a sudden, like, oh my gosh, holy cow, I think that's super cool. Um, I don't think we need to play again, though, I think we got the idea, but I liked it. That was fun. Yeah, there's, like, some PC speaker level music. I mean, let's say no. Let's do a list of here. There's the guy's name and address. There must be like a bunch of crazy lines with all the sound in it. I think it was the data before the... Jack Miller, Toledo, Ohio. I, I tried to stop it, but I pressed the wrong button. All right, damn it. Let me do that again. Press Control C like an idiot. There are all these data things. This thirty set three Z Y X. I bet you that's that's his uh, code for the notes. Three point five J, four point five G. He probably mapped those to like to musical tones or something. Very cool. Uh, very very cool. So that was uh, spelling egg. I'm going to skip the securities thing because I, I already know it's not a game. I looked at it before. It is basically a, a program to track your securities portfolio. And while that's super exciting, I think we'll skip it now, especially from lack of time. And I'll just go on to Bounce, which is the last program here. And a very simple one, actually. But uh, simple programs can still be very cool. See, I got so many tapes here that I need to like digitize. There's just like a handful of tapes. <laughs> so I was thinking the other day, like if like when I started collecting for TRS eighty, if someone had come, to, like, there's so many stuff that I don't have that I want. But if someone had come to me like when I first started TRS collecting TRS eighty and dumped all the stuff, these tapes on me, like, even just this one pile over here, I would have been, like, so freaking happy and excited by it. I mean, I still am when I get stuff in the mail like this, but... Bounce by Norman Dodds. Plus clear for charge to enter the start game. I don't know where the clear button is. Uh, is there a clear? I'm pressing, like, every button. Oh, here we go. The object of this game... To avoid getting hit by a bouncing ball, at the beginning of the game will position the center of the screen and look like this. You can move around the screen by pressing the arrow keys when you up, left, down, or right. When our game starts, a ball which looks like this will bounce around the screen. It'll be fairly easy to avoid. However, every 10 seconds, another ball will be added to make your task harder. You cannot move off the screen, either can the balls. 
The game ends when a ball hits you or you hit a ball. It's like I said, pretty straightforward. The ball, <laughs> four circles were invented. Fall speed average. Oh, it's average. Shit, that's pretty damn fast. Oh, it's not so easy to avoid. It's like, it's like hard. I'm used to like try to hit the balls, not avoid them. <laughs> Dude, this is a little crazy. Ah, whoa, whoa, ah, damn it. Yes, I see you got me. You got hit by a ball. It took four balls to get you. I want to play again. I'll try one more time. This is a, this is a very simple game, but it probably it's probably a game you could if there was a, there should be a score. There's no score except for four. If there was a more like interesting score than that, I bet you, you it's the type of game you probably could play for an Activision patch theoretically. Although it's a little bit too simple from the perspective of like um, it's just like you know not I don't know it's not entertaining enough to keep you focused on it. I guess should I call it dodgeball? I think the guy that was happy calling you. What was it called? Balls or what the hell was it called? A bounce. Yeah, you should have called it balls or something like that. Ah, get away from me! I find this very hard. Fuck! I ran right into it. <laughs> bounce. I'll try one more time. I mean, who's going to play fast? That's like for... Does he play it fast? I'm just going to hide in the corner here. Let's see if that's a good strategy. <laughs> I, ran, I walked into it! I was so stupid! Uh, one, more, one more time. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can sit in the corner again. This time I won't... I won't move into a ball. I don't think that core is very safe. Let's see how long I last. Oh, they entered right in the corner and got me. That's not fair. <laughs> they do that on purpose? Boo, that was cheap. Let's, let me try the other corner. Uh, is that random or is that like just, that's just the way it works? Is there a scoring system for this? Yeah, the score is how many balls does it take to get you. I'm saying there should be a, bit more, a different scoring system than this, but... Close, close calls here. I mean, eventually they'll get me, but I'm, maybe I'll... This might be a better strategy to try to avoid them. Five balls. If I get a six balls, it's a better strategy. Oh, man, look how close that was. Oh so, uh, man. Well, I got a six ball, so that was, I guess, a good test. <laughs> Want to play again? I think not. Folk wave bounce is more important. Well, that's, that's it. All right. So, that's, I think that's, that's it for, for right now. Um, again, we had early games in November, November 1981 issue of Sea Load. A November 1981 issue of Sea Load, the cover was, was not so good. Lifespan was eh. Planets over Seattle was terrible. Spelling Egg I really enjoyed. Bounce was okay. And then early games was... 
uh, even if I was a kid, I mean, you know, the truth is, if I was two years old, I probably would like early games. But I think as a three-year-old, I would prefer Spelling Egg. I feel like Spelling Egg had more to it than the early games. There wasn't even any sound in the early games. If the early games had sound, maybe it would have gotten some... I didn't have sound. I was like, eh, eh, and ding! I mean, that was sound, I guess, but it was not so good. Are you going to see the Spelling Egg shattered? <laughs> That's a good point. Let's do that. I forgot about that. Hold on. We'll hear. We'll get to see the spelling egg shattered. Uh, where is it? Good call, Dorian. But I feel like again, r right now, I feel like I prefer the Sea Load magazine. To the, I don't know. It, it, this this was like this was like good from an education perspective. But it was not good from a fun perspective. There was no progression. It was just boring. I felt like the spelling egg was was better education than this, although it was mostly memorization, so I don't know about that. But uh, anyway, let's, let's, let's watch this. But while it's loading, I'm going to thank all the people who are here today, because usually everybody leaves while I'm doing that, so this, this time you feel incentive to stay. And the child on the cover probably like was getting like, you know, like chocolate or something. Thank you to Pirate Gamer Boy, to Dorian, to Stars Manny, to ND, to Pal Puck, to Always Asleep, to um, Ninja was here before. I don't know if she's still here, but thank you to Ninja. And uh, whoever's lurking, there's definitely some more lurkers. So I think I mentioned everybody that spoke up, though. If I didn't, if I missed somebody, let me know. But uh, let's see what happens here. We're going to see the egg explode, hopefully. And uh, after that, like I said, I'm going to wrap up the stream. Tomorrow I might play this. I'm tempted to to play this tomorrow because it looks like really fun. And I like I love the disc. It's just so cool. If you missed it before, here it is again. So we might do this tomorrow and leave the Atari stream for... for... Oh, you're still here? Awesome. Sorry about that, Ninja. I didn't mean to put you down there. Um... Mainly we leave the Atari stream for Sunday. We'll see. I haven't decided yet. Probably. I think that's what I'm, I'm leading towards, though. Play something else tomorrow and do Atari on Sunday. But first we're going to see the egg exploding. But I'll use this time. Well, it's, it's just ready now. But to say... You saw that channel? Oh, man. You saw that Discord chat? That sucks. All right. Well, I'm still going to play it. <laughs> but thanks everyone for who were here. Well, you guys did laugh my joke before when I said it's it's like you walked out a person in the middle of changing. I thought that was very funny, and nobody even said it was funny or laughed. I'm like very hurt. I think I'm gonna stop telling jokes on this channel. Let's be more serious and be like, yes. Today we have early games. All right, someone's laughing. <laughs> I still like this music. I feel like they played this on the uh, on the Star Trek episode with Finnegan, or the Shore Lead episode, original Star Trek. There were players one. What happened to your school headmaster once? That sounds like something uh, inappropriate. <laughs> I'd say five words. <laughs> How about give me A? Oh, someone came and just changed it. Really? That's funny. If you guess the letter again, he rolls his eyes at you. That's funny. <laughs> there he scrambled there, all right? All right, it's, it's so loud. Oh, my God. Total score is two zero. <laughs> That was fun. I'm glad we got to do that. Thank you for that suggestion, Dorian. But that's going to be it for today. We'll hopefully stream again tomorrow, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And keep TRS-80 alive. Dorian says, you killed me, kid. You ruined me happy. <laughs> the kid probably is happy, actually. Like, subscribe, share, play some TRS-80 games. We've got a ton more to play still on this channel. 
Make sure you're subscribed, and tomorrow we'll do something else. Thanks, everybody, for being here so much. You guys are all awesome, and we'll do this again soon. Peace out, guys.